Donald Trump has stunned the political establishment in Washington, people around the world, investors, by not only defeating Hillary Clinton, but defeating Hillary Clinton with a very strong result that some people are comparing to Brexit. I'm here with John Fury, who is a long-term spokesman for the Republican Party, former top aide to Dennis Hastert, the Speaker of the House, and Jim Manley, who spent a long time with Senator Ted Kennedy, and then the spokesman for Harry Reid, the top Democrat in the Senate. Let me start by asking you both, what is the significance, Jim, of what happened? Well, as a Democrat, I, I got to admit that we took a real shellacking. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what exactly happened because I got to tell you, just like everybody else, I was caught completely surprised by all of this. And the fact of the matter is the numbers are really, really brutal. Not only did she lose, obviously, but, you know, they failed to turn out African-American voters. They failed to turn out Hispanic voters. So where was this vaunted wave that everybody's talking about? Uh, but uh, again, be, above and beyond that, I just find it amazing that uh, the uh, folks actually went for this guy's views, and we're going to have to try and figure out as a party how we can go about trying to reconnect uh, with the average uh, middle-class voters. Now, John, the you know, Republican Party is obviously very happy to win. This is the first time since Ronald Reagan that you're going to control the White House, the House, and the Senate. Uh, but there were a lot of Republicans who were not on board the Trump train. How surprised do you think the Republican establishment is today at, at what they've woken up to? Well, this was a change election. Uh, Donald Trump was the change candidate. And it was also a complete rejection of the political establishments of both parties. It wasn't just a, re a rejection of Hillary Clinton as a candidate. It was also a rejection of the Bush family and Mitt Romney, who really had a stranglehold on the Republican Party. A lot of Republicans are very uh, unhappy with this result. I talked to a lot of them inside the Beltway. They were kind of rooting for Hillary, but they've got Donald Trump. And now the question is, what do we do now? Let me ask you both, before we talk about policies and what Trump will try or not try to do, how do we get to a place where most of the political establishment didn't see what was coming. This is a country that has the most aggressive, uh, dynamic media industry. You have congressmen, congresswomen all across the country who presumably are talking to their constituents. If the country was so angry, why did nobody know? Well, I would say that uh, we, the Washington Beltway, they had their own kind of spin on things. They, they thought that, uh, that the the anger exhibited was localized to only a small percentage of the population and really kind of only chiefly relegated to a small uh, white working class portion of, uh, of the population, which actually turned out to be bigger than, than people thought. Um, and I think that also, we're, we're in, inside Washington, we've had a pretty good economy. Uh, things here are, have been um, not bad. We didn't really have a bit deep recession. Other parts of the country, though, like in the middle of Pennsylvania, in the middle of Michigan, Part, certain parts of Wisconsin, they have, are still struggling from the 2008 financial crisis, and they're angry as hell at wa a Washington uh, culture that seems to think that they're above everybody and elite. And I think the other part of this process is that the media really played a very active role in this election, and they kind of had their own candidate, and they, and they also despised Donald Trump. And when uh, that, that, by despising Donald Trump, a lot of the voters for Donald Trump kind of took it on themselves that they, they were despised as well. And so there was a rejection not only of the political establishment, but also of the media establishment. Jim, we, we've had, you know, it's, it's very easy to talk about gridlock in Washington, and there's plenty of it. In four years' time, are we going to be talking about gridlock never went away, or do you think there's the, the, the gates will open and we'll actually have some, some movement here? Hope springs eternal, but as of right now, I'm pretty pessimistic. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you take a look at the election, and your takeaway from that is that Republicans, especially in the House, are going to want to cut deals. I think you need to get your head examined. Uh, as you alluded to, we head have... Head examined because... Uh, I don't think they're going to want to uh, compromise. I, I, I think the takeaway from House Republicans is that Trump won, we won, and we want to ram our agenda through, come hell or high water. Conversely, as you alluded to, we've got Senator Warren, Senator Sanders, and others that see a chance to try and advance their agenda. And it's a narrowly divided Senate still. Under the current rules of the Senate, everything requires 60 votes. If I'm correct, I don't think many of these things that they're going to try to move are going to get 60 votes. That means they're going to die, just like everything else has done for the last couple of years. So, like I said, hope springs eternal, but I don't see much of a chance of getting much done 
uh, uh, over the next couple of years. So let me ask you both. So if you're a foreign business or a foreign government looking at Washington today, looking at America, what are the kind of things you need to be paying attention to over the next few months to get a sign for where Donald Trump and the two parties are going to go? What, what, what's the kind of roadmap you need to be looking at? Well, I think you need to look at uh, if Trump is successful in making uh, America a better place for companies to locate because of energy costs, because of uh, lower taxes on corporations, if you uh, think that uh, they will have a better uh, regulatory environment, which he promises a better environment, on, for, for example, on, on environmental regulations, uh, he promises to make America a better place to, to, to do business, to locate businesses. Um, and so he also promises to be much less uh, um, anti-big business uh, as opposed to you know, the, the Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders faction. In the, in the, but he's also a populist, so that makes it uh, kind of hard to figure out. So I, I would kind of try to separate the populist rhetoric from what they're actually doing. And finally, I would take a look at who he's trying to appoint in key positions. Is he appointing um, people who are, have practice in, in the business sector, who actually know something about business? If he does that, I think it'll be a, a, a hint that he, he wants to create a more pro-business atmosphere. Or is he going to appoint people who are like Jeff Sessions, who are very anti-trade and anti-immigration, and they have that harsh rhetoric, I think, that will make a lot of foreign investors a little bit nervous. Yeah, and I guess I'm glad you asked the question because it allows me to try and revise and extend my previous answer. Not, not only do I expect uh, President Trump to move quickly to repeal many of Obama's executive orders, especially as it relates to energy and the environment, but there is a little trick that they have available in Congress, perfectly legal, uh, uh, and a, a legislative tool that allow them to package a lot of major tax and, sp and spending issues, including tax cuts for the wealthy, a repeal of Obamacare, welfare reform, and every other bad idea that's been kicking around on Capitol Hill for years, package, put it into one big package as long as it meets certain requirements and it can't be filibustered in the Senate. And that's going to happen relatively quickly. Um, there are certain date, uh, deadlines they have to meet, but by March or April, this massive package will be ready to uh, go to the uh, floor of the House and the Senate. What do you call that trick? Uh, it's a little thing called reconciliation. Let me ask you both finally, Donald Trump has talked about corporate interests and lobbyists and coming to Washington and draining the swamp. You guys have been in politics for most of your lives. You're both now lobbyists at the same firm. Um, are you worried at all that that business is going to suffer? Usually when you have a new president, new issues kind of come up. The corporations get very nervous and they need representation. They need someone to make their case to the Hill and to the administration. I think that the Trump administration is going to be very, very good for business. Uh, just put me down as hell no. I doubt I'm have. I doubt I'm going to have much juice or access with the Trump administration. <laughs> Some people have said that the, the the swamp, the biggest alligator in the swamp, is now Donald Trump. Uh, is that a... <laughs> no true words have ever been spoken. <laughs> thank you very much for both coming in, and uh, let's see what the next two months holds. You got a deal. Thank you. Never thank a dull you. moment.